much, Chair. Thanks, gentlemen, for coming. Um, what I'm hearing very clearly is clarity, simplicity, certainty. Um, we are dealing with the biggest economic transformation since the Industrial Revolution, um, and we could go at it blind, but we're beside the United States, and they are that big sucking sound you hear is investment going to every part of the United States. So um, I just want to start with you, Mr. Mello, um, for your members. Um, in terms of certainty, one of the important things of certainty is making sure we have political certainty. Uh, I'm looking at a headline, July 2022 headline, Alberta is Canada's renewable energy capital. December 22nd, Alberta is in a solar gold rush. July 9th, $160 million in new solar projects announced uh, in, uh, in July in Alberta. And then Daniel Smith put the moratorium on, and the next headline says $33 billion in investments at risk. We now have learned that in two months, there's been a 20% drop uh, in solar projects in Alberta. I think in any industry, a 20% drop in two months would be a very serious uh, kick in the face. How do your members see that? Well. The moratorium in Alberta was a disappointing mistake by the uh, government of Alberta. We're working with them through this inquiry, to tr as we've been working with them throughout the process. We work with all governments as part of that regulatory process. But as you rightly pointed out, 75% of all renewable investments were made in Alberta last year because they do have an open framework and things like that. However, putting this pause on there when we'd been working on those issues. Sorry, uh, we got to have a point of order from Sorry. Mr. Bruce. I'm going to jump in because it's about the chirping again when witnesses are speaking. Witnesses come to speak and to give us their opinions. We hear a lot of different opinions. People may agree with some, people may disagree with others. Um, but when a witness comes to speak, I think that we need to show them respect and to not be chirping at them during their, their time that they're speaking. Chair. Thank you to my colleague for uh, scolding me. I appreciate that. I, of course, did just mention that Alberta has been that leader for decades, of course. Uh, sorry, so, Chair. Um, and this I is... guess if our member wants to talk about pol uh, sorry, political Chair. and regulatory decisions uh, by provincial governments sorry, instead Chair. of Ms. how Ms. we're actually going to deliver Ms. on Stubbs. our job federally for all Canadians, uh, excuse that's me. one thing. Ms. Stubbs, Chair, can uh, I just Mr. Angus has the floor of... and you. Mr. Mello um, I, I uh, is I answering a question. I listen with respect. I find that heckling and insulting and trying to intimidate witnesses is not becoming. So I'd ask Ms. Stubbs and her party to stop this so we can continue. So and I'd like I to ask Charlie, if I, I could get my time. I will. I could, I've paused. Uh, Mr. Angus, I paused your time. So I could just ask some simple I've, questions. I've paused your time. Um, I will ask all members to please allow the member to ask the question and the individual providing uh, testimony to be able to provide their testimony as a courtesy. So. Let's all please work together and give everybody uh, the time and respect that they've given to be here today. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Mr. I, Mello, uh, sorry, Mr. Angus, the floor is yours. Well, I'll, I'll continue. I'm very sorry that this happened to you. Um, I, think, I think the issue that I'm asking about is I just spoke with people who are in the clean energy business who told me that when they're looking for investment, the first question they're being asked now is what jurisdiction you're in because they are not going to get money in a jurisdiction where they can't trust the politics. Is that what your members are hearing? Our members are hearing that it is very difficult to acquire capital if you cannot build or cannot acquire permits. We are, my members are really hopeful that we will be able to get back to this and get on, ready to go in February. But yes, um, we are often asked, my members are often asked where they're going to be deploying capital. And it's really important that we have regulatory and political will to allow us to build. I ask this question because it is so important. When we're looking at $110 billion investment in the United States, we're looking at Texas, where the, uh, the solar and wind capacity has just exploded. Um, when you have certainty, investors will invest. What we've been told is that if the jurisdiction right now is Alberta, they're not willing to invest because they don't know what uncertainty is coming. Do we have other jurisdictions in Canada who can pick up the slack because we can't afford to lose this investment to the United States? Um, I can say that many provinces and system operators are issuing calls for power across this country or are preparing that. I can think Ontario has some, Saskatchewan has several, the province of Quebec is beginning its process as well. We have a very favorable uh, 
integrated resource plan coming out of Manitoba that is looking at wind as a possible way to build up their grid and continue to grow. Um, in Texas, again, which is even further right than some of my conservative colleagues, um, I mean, there's 800,000 clean energy jobs there. Um, they have got through a brutal um, uh, heat wave with the air conditioners running full out because they had wind solar capacity. Uh, whereas Daniel Smith has rented a truck driving around Al uh, Ottawa saying that the power has gone out. Uh, that's not a good way to attract investment, I don't think. Uh, I'm, I'm not a conservative. That's how they think they get it. But I want to ask you, in terms of Texas, they lowered the cost of electricity for consumers by $11 billion last year by the switch to wind and solar. Are your members able to provide lower cost energy for Canadians looking to get renewables on the grid? Well, uh, if we look at the 2023 Lazard cost of energy report, which studies primarily the U.S., but it goes to North America, we saw that renew firmed up renewable electricity was the lowest cost uh, source of electricity. That is in lower than combined cycle natural gas or peakers uh, on, in terms of division. It will take all forms of energy to get us across the line, but it is, it is shown that when you put renewables, we reduce prices. I, I, I'm, I'm running out of time. I'm fascinated by the, um, by the uh, prevailing wage conditions, which is something new Democrats fought for to make sure we're getting good union jobs. The, your members are supporting the prevailing wage conditions so that we are actually putting good jobs in the field. We noticed that we've lost $45,000 in the oil operations because they're gone to automation. We need to replace those jobs. Are your members supporting uh, this move for prevailing wage conditions and apprenticeship training? We are, inc we are incredibly supportive of those prevailing wages. Uh, we are simply asking for guidance uh, for each jurisdiction. As we know, there are some complexities when, uh, when way it's worked throughout Alberta, Saskatchewan, particularly as the way those labor agreements do structure. Well, and very quickly uh, on Indigenous, what do we need to do? We need to make sure that Indigenous entities, be that communities, companies, or individuals can access an investment tax credit at an equal rate as their taxable partners. It is unfair to list otherwise. Thank you.